And welcome to Rensselaer Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Dave right alongside Johns Hopkins for a midfielder. Mark Dixon, great to have you with us here for the Division II National Championship game between Tampa at 20-0 in their first ever appearance in the title game, head-to-head -head with Mercy from Dobbs Ferry, New York, in their first appearance ever in the national title game. Great crowd, great day. And here we go, set to start the D2 title game. Already RIT defended its championship here today at Rensselaer, winning in the Division III title game over Union. D1 game, Maryland Cornell tomorrow. Division two about to unfold here. Hunter Turner head to head with P.J. Argaros, the All-American face-off man. And a win early and a face shot off the face-off for Mercy. And Tyler Paytack, the sophomore midfielder, off the wing with a big blast for the Mavericks. Clad in blue, the North Region number one seed against Tampa, the South Region top seed. And Mercy had to take down defending national champion Lemoyne to get to this stage. Tampa took down Limestone. Good storyline there. Head coach of the Spartans, J.B. Clark, was a longtime coach of the Saints and won national championships with that program as well. Sure did, 1-3. Good takeaway for Cormac McCarthy with 20 starts this year. A six-foot pole, and Tampa tries to clear with Matthew Badeau, the national defensive player of the year in D2, Schmeiser Award winner, and the Enters Award winner as the player of the year. Both awards for Badeau this year. Number 10 in white, a player to keep in mind today for Tampa. Yeah, pretty incredible when you think about the National Player of the Year being a defenseman. You try to translate that to the Division I level, the Tawaraton Trophy. W would he be the presumptive winner of the Tawaraton as a defender? Kilkowski works offensive end. A shot is blocked. And trying to recover there is Umano, third-team All-American goalie. The goalie for Tampa, Blake Ulmer, is the Kelly Award winner as the National Goal of the Year in Division II. So, Lots of stars on the field today between these two top seeds. Yeah, big time. And then you have first-team All-Americans, Jack Gibbons, a midfielder for Mercy, as well as Brady Kiernan. So they've got two first-team All-Americans on the offensive end of the field working against Badeau. And then, of course, the goaltender that you mentioned, Blake Homer. Third-team All-American, Dom Scorcia, have the game winner. Purchase New York. National semifinals against Powerhouse Lemoyne, the five-time D2 champs. That was in double overtime. As Kiernan handles here, a good poke check along the near side with 35 to shoot on this Mercy possession. As they go for a title in their first title tilt appearance, Kiernan driving toward the crease. Got bumped off the play, taken away by Tampa. And here come the Spartans at 20-0 this year on the attack, trying for the icebreaker today. Yeah, Kiernan on Badeau. And that's first-team All-American against first-team All-American. Badeau wins that first matchup. Matukas lost it to Jason Girdville. Another All-American third-teamer for Mercy. And to the offensive end. Here come the Mavericks trying to get something going. That pass a little bit high. And play is helter-skelter here on both sides. Badeau trying to find another ground ball, as he's done so many times for Tampa this year. And, you know, look, big stage, first time for each in the national final. Also, difference in styles. I mean, Division Two is very much segregated between North and South. That's how the playoffs are set up. And because of travel restrictions, budget limitations, it's often play more of a regional than a national schedule. So these two really not that familiar with one another on the field between the lines. Cole Willard handles here, partner on the offensive end of the back 15. And Colin White. Team's leader in scoring, 51 goals for White this year. Plenty of firepower on each side. Offensively, Kilkowski, one of the top attackmen. Passing, the bounce shot is off target there for McEnany. At West Hill High School. A lot of Syracuse guys in the white-clad Tampa uniforms today. Members of their staff from upstate New York. Better, better winners in Tampa. I was going to say, they want to get out of the cold. <laughs> A lot better. High shot score, Fitzpatrick gets it going for Tampa. It's the icebreaker in the Division II National Championship game. Daniel Fitzpatrick had two against Limestone in the semis. He's got one in the championship game here. One of the New Yorkers on this roster, the honorable mention All-American out of Chester, New York. Nothing fancy about this, just off of the end line on the restart, catches the ball up top and then just goes down the alley and kind of muscles his way through two blue jerseys powerful shot from Fitzpatrick finds the back of the cage and Tampa's out to the early lead 37th goal of the year 
And the first of our championship game. Face off win. Tampa trying to grab it. On a loose change. McEnany looking to find the GB just outside the box. Scrum continues. Trying to establish possession and eventually. He's played well. We had a good chat with J.B. Clark today, going for a fourth national title. But in his first year at Tampa, it's a remarkable story, Dixie, to go from Limestone, where he's won three championships at D2, to Tampa and take this program all the way to the title game. I think it shows in, in the nature of Division II lacrosse that, you know, the coaching really matters and the leadership really matters. This is a, a program that's been around for a little while. Rory Whipple built the foundation, but to have a coach like J.B. Clark come in and, and really you know, tie it all together has, has been impressive. Charlie Bullish, second line midfield out here with Nick Pum. The offensive end for Tampa. Good pass in traffic, shot stopped. Got a piece of that quick stick drive from Nick Papa. Backed up, Tampa continues possession here. Shot clock not reset. We're at 20 seconds on this 80-second shot clock attempt for Tampa. Working in front, trying to find Nick Pop again, the senior from Manlius, New York, another Syracuse area player. Out of bounds. Good pressure. Defense, end line, and Mercy takes over. Good defense by Mercy. Needed that stop. Try to clear this thing and then get your offense on track in this national championship game. Beautiful weather. Hartford, Connecticut. Both fan bases look like they've come out in full force. You got one side to the left of us, Mercy. They're behind their bench, the dark blue stands, and then the, the bright red behind the Tampa Spartans. Robert Guglielmo passing off to teammate Sean Maycar, grad student, cousin of Brett Maycar. Going from Maryland, looking for a national championship at the D1 level. Yorktown Heights, that family from that part of Southern New York State. Scorship, big offensive stars we said against LeMoyne. Had a hat trick to end the season for Dan Sheehan's Dolphins. Defending champs in D2. So new champion in 2022. Two teams here for the first time ever. Pretty cool to see the changing of the guard in D2 this year. It is. No goal, player in the crease. Oh, wow. What a quick stick try there from Maycar. To the left of the cage would have been the first of the day for Mercy to wipe it off. Mercy bench protest. They're asking how the player get there in the crease. They're contesting that he was pushed. If, in fact, that was the case, that should have been a flag down. You can, you know, you can bump a guy into the crease if it's equal pressure, guys trying to cut through, but you can't blatantly push someone in. But unfortunately for Mercy, the goal does not count. Possession back over to Tampa. Fitzpatrick, the lone goal so far in our championship game, gets the return pass. Trying to track it down along the end line. It's out of bounds. Good effort there from Daniel Fitzpatrick. First line midfielder for Tampa. A little sloppy play here again. Both teams still feeling each other out, trying to get a semblance of how to attack, where to attack from, you know, calming the nerves down a little bit. Another Tampa coach, Dave, Mark, Mark Penn, on the staff of J.B. Clark. Former head coach at Florida Tech, and when he was dismissed from the Panther program, not a popular decision, and very popular amongst his players and, uh, and alumni. You know, coach Clark tells us today, it's the staff that has helped with the transition. Players were so accepting of he and his family taking over from Limestone. It's extraordinary. Undefeated in his first year on the verge of a national championship. That's something. Quick whip shot there from Kiernan. Two and three for five for Brady Kiernan head-to-head -head with LeMoyne last week in the semis. And a Jordan Levine leading the charge for the Mercy Mavericks. We remember him from his playing days. Sure. An outstanding player at University of Albany for head coach Scott Marr and the, and the Great Danes. We called their national quarterfinal game way back. Overtime loss to Max Seaball and Cornell. Flag flies. Penalty on the way here. It's going to be against Tampa. And a man up with a cross-check call against the Tampa Spartans in their defensive end. Chance for six on five lacrosse here for Mercy. Yeah, so far in this game, defense has won out for Tampa. Of course, they have the National Player of the Year and the Defender of the Year in Badeau, and then the goalkeeper 
Blake Ulmer, first team All-American. So, and then and, and goaltender of the year as well in Division II. So we'll see if this offense can get on track. A lot of times when you're struggling a little bit, EMO is the is the elixir that you need. Marcia the man up this year, 28. EMO tallies operating about 38.5%, six on five, so good opportunity here. Get the goal, the D2 title game, Jack Gibbons operates here to the right of the cage. Big shot stopped. And knocked out, Blake Ulmer, big save for Tampa. The Kelly Award winner for National Go of the Year. Here comes the break. And Tampa, the Spartans on the move in the offensive end with Casey Platenic. Across the midfield line into the box. You have to like the way Ulmer stepped to that shot. Was aggressive, exploded toward it. Nice save. Use his body. He's a wide guy. 6'1", 195. So he's a big body down there, and that was a nice save. Luke McEnany and company in the offensive end here. As Tampa gets things set up, it's Patrick. Lone goal so far, about three and a half minutes in for the first quarter. The only tally thus far of the D2 title game. Perfect day for Cos Lacrosse again in East Hartford after the rain and lightning the latest three and a half hours during the D1 semis on Saturday. Owen Miller trying to create. Pass, Aaron picked up Fitzpatrick again. Operates to the left of the cage. Miller trying to get something set up. And Mercy takes it away. Good play for Kipnis. He's got 41 ground balls, 16 cost turnovers this year with a six-foot pole for Coach Levine. Really good all-around team in all phases. A third-team All-American out of Wonton, New York. Another one. Lots of All-Americans on the field here, Dixie. There, there is a ton. Wonton, New York, of course, the hometown of Seth Tierney, current head coach at Hofstra University. Now big lacrosse on Long Island. Yeah, your hometown of Charm City, of course, as always. Yeah. In Baltimore, scores show the grad student in the Franklin Square, Long Island. He's the big hero we talked about against Lemoyne in the semis. Coach Levine, who wears many hats at Mercy in administration, he said basically, look, I, I do everything but drive the bus. Sometimes I drive <laughs> the bus. <laughs> he's setting budgets. He's working about travel. He's got... You mentioned this week his wife's away at a convention, so he had three kids under the age of 10 at home. I mean, it was uh, quite a week for yeah. Coach Levine to get ready for the D2 title game. Sure he wouldn't trade it for anything, though. Having <laughs> That's a, exactly what having he said. Having a shot at the gold. First time school history. Guglielmo trying to create here. Along with Robert Larico on the offensive end. Let's see trying for that first goal of this D2 title game and even things up. Here on top of the box, left-hand cradle. Pass low, tough to handle there for Larico. That's turned over, back to Tampa. Yeah, some sloppy ball handling again, both teams. Some unforced errors, turning the ball over. That was a late shot clock turnover, so really no harm, no foul for Mercy, but they're having a really tough time getting quality shots on Omer and this Tampa defense. Christian Brodiak, a shorty across the midfield line. And helps get set up in the offensive end. He'll head off for an offensive player as McEnany and company get set up here. A patient possession for Coach Clark's team. Number four to go in our first quarter. one nothing lead. Just Fitzpatrick so far. Tallying for Tampa. Champion to be crowned today is Hartford. Kilkowski operates in the back 15. Ball moving for Nick Papa. Turnover. Charlie Bullish couldn't handle the rock there. Tampa, and it comes back to Mercy, chance for a clear. Yeah, nice job. Mercy again creating some havoc. Turnover to the Spartans. So both teams just still very sloppy. But getting it, you know, probably working the Kings out. Christian Castles gets it across the midline, and we have got a timeout. Here in East Hartford, Jordan Levine and Mercy will take a timeout with three.
So far, just Daniel Fitzpatrick, a goal for the Tampa Spartans. South region top seed in the D2 title game. 20 0 on the year, Dixies. We checked the D2 brackets, much smaller than Division Three. The North region, South region top seeds are the games in our title game today in Mercy and Tampa. Yeah, and there you see Mercy being able to outlast Lemoyne, the Dolphins, defending national champions. But it was a tough road. I mean, look, one goal win over Seton Hill, one goal win over Lemoyne, Limestone, that three goal win over Wingate, and then they blasted Limestone. So they've won some games really going away, scoring a ton of goals. Whereas Mercy's been in more nip and tuck battle. So it'll be interesting to see the personality as this game progresses, what it takes on. I mean, obviously so far it's a tight one, but I attest that a little bit more to nerves and sloppy stick skills than to any real like strategy or, or playmaking at this point in time. Uh, it's been a great year for both these teams. Combined 36 and one record. 15 wins of a ranked team for Tampa this year. Setting up our first ever head-to-head -head matchup between the two schools, as we talked about the differences in the regions in Division Two, in the national championship game in their first ever appearances in this title tilt. So a lot of history being created here today in East Hartford. Yeah, no question. It's great for the sport, as you mentioned. I mean, you know, kudos to the Limestones and the Lemoines of Division Two, but keeps it fresh with new teams. Matt Eccles scores for Mercy. Speaking of some history, the grad student transferred from Albany, the alma mater of Jordan Levine, has got the first ever goal for Mercy in a championship game. We're all tied 1-1 with 2.55 to go in the first quarter. Well, Levine and his coaching staff, he couldn't have drawn it up any better. And it, I mean, you talk about a perfect timeout. And it's nothing fancy, just on the restart, Eccles splits left to right, and then kind of is at a low angle. And Ulmer guessed high, and Eccles potted it well. So nice fake high, and then the finish low for Eccles to get the Mavericks on the board. Transfer from Albany in the America East for Syracuse. And Corcoran High School had three assists against LeMoyne. The semifinals, three-point game for him, and three goals, rather. And the first goal for Mercy here in the championship game. off the faceoff, they've got possession again. DJ Argaros, 59.4% face-off X. And honorable mention, All-American, as we talked about. Terrific face-off guy, and there he got some help from his wing, Justin Girdville, 13 All-American. Another All-American out there. Picked the pocket of the Tampa face-off man to get possession back for the Mavericks. Slide comes on Eccles, releases the pass to Kiernan just in time. Quick stick try sent just off target. DJ Heider brings control here in the offensive end. Well, we're looking forward to watching Badeau play, and that's why. Yeah. <laughs> He's incredible. I mean, just a clean pick. Wow. And then leading the transition. Very smooth. 74 ground balls and 45 cost turnovers Ooh. for the Schmeiser Award winner, Player of the Year defensively, and the Enters National D2 Player of the Year. We saw the, yeah, we saw the first one against Kiernan to try to get inside him. He just played great individual body and angles and was disciplined, didn't get on the back of Kiernan to foul him, just played great position. Cole Willard. Return pass and work up top for Owen Miller. He's got 32 goals this year. Lots of firepower for J.B. Clark's Tampa Spartans. Split dodge move. Miller trying to get three. The can't release. He's got 20 to shoot.
here for him. New trigger is in the back 15. High to high shot denied. Owen Miller shut down there by Tommy Yamano. Trouble with the outlet though on the clear try. See if Mercy can dodge a bullet here. That would have been disastrous had they not been able to corral that clear. But good job by Mercy on the ground ball work. Good clear under pressure and duress of Tampa, and they got to work quick. They short time now in the first quarter. 13 seconds and counting in the opening quarter. You know, a 1 1 game. Fitzpatrick and Eccles have tallied so far. Kiernan controls, and your side, GLE, a battle with it. Trying to pass in traffic. The shot bounced just off target. There from Sean Maycock. Second quarter underway from here at East Hartford Division II National Championship game. Dave Marker on tire crew, Hunter Turner going head to head with PJ Argaros. And here comes Tampa looking for a lead game. Off oh, the face off, big shot, big score. Matthew Badeau, the National Player of the Year. Defenseman shows us why with another goal in transition. His sixth of the season. And it's a 2 1 lead just underway in the second quarter. Great pressure after Mercy had won the initial faceoff to start the second quarter, and they hound the men in blue until there's a turnover, and then that was a great trail by Badeau. You can talk about his confidence in the offensive end of the field, and the teammates to give him the ball in the slot, and he just gets it. Nice shot, Badeau on the board. Well, J.B. Clark told us today in our conversation with the head coach that Badeau is by far the best player in his program. It's not close with what he can do with a six-foot four. Remarkable. We've seen the takeaway steals and the CTs already, then the transition goal. Now it's a 2-1 lead here for Tampa just underway in the second quarter. About 40 seconds in, and Tampa's got possession again with Owen Miller. A good start to the second quarter for Tampa. Is this the... Is that the juice play that they need to kind of kickstart, jumpstart a run? Cole Willard and Fitzpatrick, who scored the first goal of our championship game, play catch. Here's Miller on the way, trying to get the hands free. Miller is free for the moment, then got knocked down. Good play from behind. And Mercy looking for the takeaway, but let's see how the whistle unfolds here. There is a flag now. Yeah, late, Tripping call. Yeah, late flag, but I think it's the right call. And we're going to see if it's going to be a hold or a trip. It's going to be a trip against Mercy. So Tampa will be man up for up to one minute. He's number 47 in white. Owen Miller just got his feet taken out from under him. He's all American out of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So Tampa looking to take advantage. Both teams here, Dixie, 0 for 1 with extra man lacrosse. So up to a minute of EMO time here for the Spartans. With the home whites against Mercy. Each team making its first appearance in the national championship. Well, Willard on the handle. Operates up top. Here's Owen Miller. The Doe Fitzpatrick have scored so far. One tally in each of the first and second quarters. For Tampa, Miller trying to pass in traffic. Broken up. Loose change, deflected, comes out of bounds. And will stay with the Tampa Spartans. Retrigger, Paduch, passes for Miller. May up time continues. Big blast, big goal, long range, Cole Willard. The grad student who had four against Limestone in the semifinals. Righty rip, extra man goal. It's another for Tampa. Quick restart. And a great job of just cycling the ball across the top of their offense for the And that was a hammer by Cole Willard. 
recognize that the defense is playing a little soft, steps into an open area, and low to high rocket. Beats Tommy Umano, third team All-American for the Mercy Mavericks. And the Spartans are up by a pair. Face off, win again, Tampa trying to grab the ground ball is Nizalek, senior defenseman from Marshfield, Massachusetts, has got it with a six-foot pole. He's back to his teammate, Owen Matukas. Here is Tampa again on possession, up by a couple. Two minutes into our second quarter on Championship Sunday. RIT repeating its title run from last year with a win over Union in the D3 game. D1 game tomorrow at 1 Eastern as Maryland tries to run the table and go a perfect 17-0 or 18-0, and they'll take on the title tomorrow. Yeah, can't wait for that one. So many ties between the programs. And Big Red, the last obstacle in the way of Maryland perfection, a national title in history. The Big Red machine, right? <laughs> I mean, Big what time. a year it's been for Maryland. Yeah. Extraordinary. Fear the turtle. Bullish on the offensive end operates along with Willard. The score with a man up a moment ago. Tent with a patient half field possession. Pass off the top of the cross of Willard. Comes the pop up. Six foot pole matchup. Shoots and scores again. Cole Willard this time goes low. Righty hammer with some. Back to back jacks for Willard this time. Even strength. Uh, Spartans. First. one was a step down on extra man with some time and room and this one on the run not bad defense in his gloves but then Willard's able to set his feet and whip it underhand good velocity I think he may have crossed up Romano on that shot but nonetheless the run continues for the Spartans four of his Prior 12 goals, as we mentioned, against the Limestone in the semifinals. Two here today already for the grad student from Casanova, New York. That's upstate near Syracuse. Not far from the city of Syracuse. It's kind of on the way out to Colgate. Beautiful country there. Three seasons, it's beautiful. The winter maybe. maybe. <laughs> this from someone who spent 25 winters in Central New York. Do you get three seasons? Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Winter, winter's long. That almost counts as two. But Cas Lake, just a beautiful spot in upstate for sure. That is especially the case this time of year. Con White and company back on offense again. Tampa dominant in a faceoff dot. Charging right through. Quick shot. Miller scores. Oh, and Miller keeps the run going for Tampa. Four in a row to begin the second quarter. Make it 5-1 for the Spartans. Trying to run the table and finish the year 21-0. Timeout called by George Levine and Mercy College. Yeah, he's seen enough, and that's two, turn, two out of timeouts now for Levine and the Mavericks with 11-15 left to go here in the second quarter. That is just too easy if you're Owen Miller. Just a dodge, a sweep to the middle of the field and then you get downhill, and then you shove it down the Mercy goalie's throat. That is just a, a terrific dodge. Poor defense for Mercy, and I think Coach Levine senses this game, senses this game getting away from him and his team, hence the timeout, to try to slow down this Spartan run. Well, Hunter Turner's been outstanding in the faceoff dot for Tampa here winning five of seven and it's something that J.B. Clark told us today in our conversation that we really needed the face-off unit and the wings to be outstanding to make it take it. They've done that and taking advantage of some breakdowns defensively here for Mercy. Bottom line, Tampa looks great. They do. They do. And then it was a sloppy first quarter for both teams. But Tampa has really buttoned it up here in the second stanza of action. And they're on a run right now, and, and Mercy needs to Mercy needs some possession time, and they need to make some plays to get back in this game. J.B. Clark told us today, winning the game against Limestone, his former program where he won three national titles at the D2 level, was like playing against your kids. <laughs> it was really hard. 
certainly knows what the Kirst family feels like with so many of their players going head to head, including CJ and Colin in the national semis. Rutgers Cornell yesterday won by the Big Red. Said his family was there watching that game, hugging the limestone players because they all knew him so well after his yeah. great run as the head coach of that program. Spent so many, so many years there and had so much success. Turner wins another faceoff. So case in point, off the mercy timeout. Another possession here for the Spartans. And now if you're Mercy, you just got to get a stop. Get a stop, get a clear, get on offense. It's been a minute since you've had any possession time. And start to try to chip away at this Tampa lead. About 16 minutes. Now Mercy has not scored. The only goal from Fitzpatrick. That was about three and a half minutes into the first quarter. To make it 1-0. Since then, Eccles scoring in the first to tie it. We're 1-1 after one. It's been all Tampa since. Romani with a nice save this time. Goal stick stop into the corner. Who's closest to it? It's going to be Tampa again hanging on a possession. Kilkowski, really good effort. Got a hat trick against Limestone in the semifinals. Team second leading scorer. And they're up 5 1 without him being involved. Yeah. <laughs> They've got a lot of weapons. They do. Rip shot, high, stop this time. Tommy Yamano. I will mention All American goalie for Mercy. Big save on a blast from deep. Now a clear try, and a critical time, Dixie, I think, here for Mercy to get it across the midfield line into the box, get set up, get a good shot. Without question, and, and Omano, nice save. You can see Tampa gaining confidence, starting to get into a rhythm. Not the most advisable shot for the Spartans, but again, they're feeling the confidence right now with the four-goal lead, and Omano had to step up big to make that stop, and now it's up to the Mercy offense to try to get something generated. Calabria and Scorcia play catch in the offensive box here. 940 and counting in our first half. Four goal run for Tampa. To take a four goal lead, five to one. Calabria has it, right of the cage. Goes high, stopped. Blake Homer, national goalie of the year. Makes the big save. Here comes Tampa on the run out. Chance for some transition lacrosse for Matukas. Calabria trying to knock to this next week. Luckily, he didn't get lucky. He didn't get flagged for that as he took a, one of his hands off the stick to try to deliver that blow. But again, old looks ball, nice clean save. Looks confident between the pipes. And only one shot for mercy. The Mavericks. Not enough, right? Kind of no. feels like the first game in Division Three, where Union sort of owned RIT through about a quarter and a half in terms of that possession time and long usage of the clock. Quick stick try, quick stick goal. Second eighty add to the total for Tampa with a. It was in his cross for a heartbeat for the Tampa Spartans. They are owning the second quarter. Dixie owning the game so far. Yeah, really, they, they, they are. And, and this age, 35, is up with a nice save on that prior possession from Tampa, but they can't stop that one from finding the back of the net. Gilkowski, the assist. Face off. Who's got it? Off the wing. Battle can time out because they're out of timeouts. And as you pointed out correctly, Coach Levine used both. One set up a goal. On the tally from Eccles, their only goal of the game so far. But Nizalek and company, first team All-American, long stick defenseman of the year nationally, another award winner for Tampa. Yeah. In Coach Clark's first year with a program. I mean, they cleaned up in the USILA postseason awards. Amazing. Showing their prowess here. Wow. Big lead, Miller controls again. He's got one already, trying to get the left hand free, and a blast is off target. Trying to test Tommy Umano, senior from Seaford, Island, in the nets here for Mercy. 40 to shoot, seven and a half to go. In our first half, Miller top of the box. 
Fitzpatrick got the scoring going in the first quarter. Passing this time in traffic. Quick stick goal again. It's too easy. Cole Willard has got his second. Ball movement, cross crease passes. Fabulous precision shooting. Outstanding. And Tampa is rolling. Yeah, they really got this mercy defense on spin cycle right now. They're winning their matchups on ball. And then they're continuing to score off ball. That is a beautiful cross cage skip by number five, Daniel Fitzpatrick. He scored the first goal of the game for Tampa. And here he finds Cole Willard. Willard, just such a great shooter. Snappy release, great velocity, terrific wrist strength. Six goal advantage for Tampa. His season best against Limestone semifinals. Four goals we talked about. He's got a couple here. And possession will go to Mercy. Off the push, the faceoff dot. And a good effort from TJ Argaros in Flatown, New York. So possession for Mercy. They've given up six in a row with about seven minutes to go in our first half. It is all Spartans. Bounce shot deflected. Then comes to the near side. Scorch near side. They cannot. Good play in their own end again. Christian Brodiak found a loose change and played it back to the goaltender, Blake Ulmer. Wow. Tampa just, again, only one shot for Mercy. Right back to Tampa. Again, big crank. Shot this time stopped. Yumano on Matukas. Try to score in transition, looking for his 10th goal of the year. Nice save by Yumano. He is standing tall. He's faced a lot of rubber here in the quarter. Giving up some goals, but he continues to, to fight. And again, Mercy's just going to have to find a way to crack through this tough Tampa defense. Easier said than done, especially when you have the best goalie in the country, best pole in the country, best long stick midi in the country. If I'm Mercy or Dixon, I'm just going to take my time. Maybe not even shoot for a few seconds. Just use some clock, rest my defense, give Yamano some mental time off to just chill. It's a six-goal run. As Mercy controls here. Echoes the only goal scored. And that was about three minutes to go in the first quarter. Yeah, and I think it. you have to be patient if you're Mercy because you're not winning any matchups. Pipe on the shot. <laughs> they won that matchup but got yeah. no break from Jack Gibbons, the senior midi. And the shot off the iron does reset the shot clock to 60. I mean, you got Gibbons, a first-team All-American, working against the long pole and Sam Collingwood. And then it looks like Tampa's going to taw a timeout. They don't like the matchups or the personnel that's out there on the field. So J.B. Clark's going to shuffle his lineup a little bit and employ a different strategy. They've got back-to-back -back tallies after Jack Gibbons score with about five and a half to go in our first half. So Mark Dixon will come back here for the Mavericks. Mercy showing some life, and they're being led by their offensive leaders. First-team All-American Jack Gibbons was able to get inside of the Tampa defense off of a dodge from up top and canned it. And here we're going to see Brady Kiernan get loose on the left wing and deliver a beautiful shot that beats Brady Omer. Just a nice job of cycling the ball behind to X and the skip pass over top the Tampa defense, the step down by Kiernan. And don't look now, but the Mustangs are starting to win some faceoffs, get some possessions, and start a little bit of a comeback. DJ Argaros, All American faceoff man for the Mavericks, has the win and possession again after back to back jacks. Scored by Gibbons and Kiernan. After a 13-minute drought with no goals for Mercy. So with about three minutes to go in our first half, it's now a 7-3 game. It had been a six-goal run for Tampa. First ever appearance, national title game for each year. And their first ever head-to-head -head matchup on yeah. the biggest stage in D2. That's just not smart offense right there. I mean, if you get to the middle of the field and you don't have anything, just pull it out or... Cycle the ball. Scorcia scores! Dom Scorcia, a tremendous move from X. Backhand shovel bouncer. Spectacular play for Mercy. Three in a row now for the Mavericks. That was an incredible goal scored by Scorcia. Unbelievable. What an effort to get above goal line extended. Just extends his body and backhands it into the back of the cage. Beautiful job by Scorcia. Third team All-American, team leading 52nd goal of the year. The game-winning goals we talked about to beat LeMoyne last week, 
in the national semifinals in double overtime. And send Mercy to its first ever title game appearance. So three in a row. Gibbons, Kiernan, now Scorcia. Scorcia a helper on the Kiernan goal moments earlier. Face-off win this time for Tampa. And the All-American Player of the Year, Badeau, with a full head of steam across the midfield line. Face-off won critically by the Spartans after the three-goal run. Here's McEnany on the handle. Two and a half to go. Right on the Hudson. Beautiful spot, great school. Tampa, first appearance ever in the title game as well. Cole yep. Willard's had a great first half. Yeah, he's a tremendous shooter, and now you have to, if you're Tampa, Rose. Have been the head-to-head -head matchup face-off dot. Argaros to win this time. Quick run out, quick shot. Kiernan blast. Got some iron. Comes all the way out to midfield. That's grabbed there by his teammate in Paytac. Sub off for an offensive player. And Mercy again on possession here. Trying to keep their roll going. After scoring three in a row, here's Scorsia near side GLE. Mercy just needs to settle down. They've shown that they can get to the cage. They can get some shots. They can make some things happen. Just settle in. Baycar, swim move, top of the box. Has Larico with him. Baycar trying to get free. Shorty matchup. Minute 17 to go in our first half. Kiernan looking for Scorsia behind the cage. However, that pass airborne. That's taken right back by Tampa. Turnover right back to the Spartans. It's Sam Collingwood with a six-foot pole. will have the GB. And they'll have possession here. Careless error for Mercy. Tampa still has a time. J.B. Clark to play through, or if he wants to talk it over and try to get that final shot. 43 seconds game clock, 56 seconds. So about a 13-second differential between game and shot clock. Plenty of time. 33 seconds and counting here for Tampa with a four goal. Fortunate turnover because now you've left a little bit of time for Mercy to make something happen. We'll see if the Mavericks can take advantage. Pass over the head of Shane Gibbons comes to Kipnis with a six foot pole. Final seconds. Scorcia looking to feed through traffic. It's deflected. And there's the horn. There's the half here in East Hartford, Connecticut. All right, so Dixie. 1-1 one, one after one, then the huge run of six in a row scored by Tampa, the top seed of the Southern region. Then a nice little run for Mercy to make an interesting game. You have to feel better if you're Mercy. I mean, that 7-1 that disadvantage, you weren't winning face-offs, you weren't really generating any quality shots, and then to come back and outscore the Spartans 3-1 to one to end the second quarter gives you a little bit of mustard, gives you a little bit of, of wind in your sails heading into the locker room. Patrick Cole Willard, first half two and one for Fitzpatrick, and Miller was one and one for two. The multi point scores for the Tampa Spartans, trying to win a national championship for the first time in school history. Halfway home, Tampa leads Mercy eight.
And welcome back to Rensselaer Field here in East Hartford, Connecticut. Dave Ryan, Mark Dixon with you. 8-4 Tampa leading Mercy. Division two national championship game. Dixie was a good start first quarter for Mercy defensively. Maticles had the one goal, and then it, after that, it was all Tampa with a huge run. Yeah, and the first quarter was really sloppy for both teams. It was uh, Daniel Fitzpatrick getting things going for the Tampa Spartans. Uh, and then, you know, Tampa just kind of started picking apart the Mercy Mavericks. It started with Badeau, the National Player of the Year, in a transition goal, and then an extra man opportunity for Cole Willard going top shelf. And the Tampa offense was just really rolling against this Mercy team. Umano, Tommy Umano, the goalie for Mercy, made a couple of saves, kept the score close. And then at the end of the, the half, Mercy just kind of flipped the switch and decided they were going to start playing and get some opportunities down at the other end, and that's exactly what they were able to do. And when you have your backs against the wall, you turn to first team All-Americans, and that is exactly what Mercy did in Jack Gibbons scoring a goal and then Brady Kiernan with another. So Tampa really stepped on the gas in that second quarter, but Mercy got some momentum in the second uh, end of the second period. All right, Dixie, check some of the key stats. Tampa outshoots Mercy 18-16. Saves were 5-4 for Mercy. And their honorable mention, all American goaltender and Tommy Umano, senior from Seaford, New York, played pretty well. <laughs> he was under a lot of pressure in that first half. GB, well, that stat goes to Tampa. And the clears are perfect for each team. Yeah, Tampa controlled the faceoffs. Therefore, the better ground ball numbers. And both teams were perfect on clears. A lot of turnovers, especially in the first quarter, in the six-on-six -six setting, and both of those uh, both squads have seemed to have settled down in that area. Willard, the hat trick on three shots, scores three goals. The transfer from Penn State, who tore his ACL, did not go through fall ball. As Coach Clark told us today, it was about the middle of March where he scored an extra man goal, and they really thought he was back close to 100%, and he's been outstanding today. Face off to begin half number two. The national championship on the line here. Tampa and the home whites trying for a goal right off the faceoff win. That blast is just off target from Christian Brodiak, senior from Parkland, Florida. Backed up, though, by the Spartans, and they'll try here again the offensive end. That was an interesting faceoff. I think Hunter Turner, the faceoff taker for the Spartans, thought that there was a second whistle, so he stopped playing. But he won it so clean, he was able to stop and then start again and get the ground ball. Miller charging at a stop. Umano, a piece of that. On Owen Miller, rebound Colin White trying to find a handle on the far side. It does go out of bounds. And Tampa keeps it here just underway at half number two. See if Tampa can snatch the momentum back. Here's or, Willard. Or if Mercy can continue to chip away at this lead. And Mil Willard, as you can see, has got the brace. Dixie on his right leg off the torn ACL. And for the Big Ten down to D2, and he has had a big impact today. Carries here through traffic. Swimming for Miller. A right-hand blast is off target. Yamano had a track nicely. 36 seconds left in the shot clock, and Tampa has put this Maverick defense under a lot of duress. Kilkowski, one of the top offensive weapons for Tampa, has been pretty quiet today. Had an assist in the first half. Miller's made some noise. Handles here top of the box. Owen Miller charging in again. Yumano, a piece of that. Deflected off the pipe off a body, and it does not go in the cage. What a break for Mercy. Yumano looked behind him. Big time break, and those are the kind of things you need to happen in order to be successful and come back from a deficit, win a national championship. We saw Union get a lot of bounces in that first game. Didn't work out for the Dutchman, but maybe it works out for Mercy. Here's Eccles in traffic, bump from behind. Things in transition, and Tampa trying to take advantage. Badeau, the All-American, looking for the GB near the midfield line. It's out of bounds. And Mercy, and Mavericks, led by Jordan Levine, former star for Scott Marr at Albany. Got a couple of Great Danes transfers on his roster. Played in the MLL as well for a while. I think the referees are going to have to talk about the shot clock. There was really no change of possession, so there shouldn't be a reset of the shot clock, and there isn't 54 seconds left to shoot for the Mavericks. Scott McCall, Joshua Blaisdell, and Tyler Harriman, the on-field officiating crew here today in East Hartford. 
Division II National Championship game. First time in the title game for each program. So some history is going to be made here, regardless of who wins it. Yeah, without question. Calabria back 15 on the handle. Flag flies. Penalty coming on Tampa here. Christian Brodiak got too physical on Calabria. Here's Eccles in the right alley, trying to create the lay penalty coming. Kiernan looking to get free. No, he's got the big shot. Passing far side for Gibbons. Had a goal, part of the three goal run for Mercy to get back in the game in the second quarter. The lay penalty coming here against Tampa. Gibbons the crank at the end of the shot clock cycle. It's wide, and here comes the call. It's going to be either be a hold or a cross check. You can see the officials telling the Tampa bench to calm down. Getting a little excited over there. There's a lot on the line today. Yeah. It's a national championship. It's going to be a hold. So an extra man opportunity, 30 seconds for Mercy. Mercy for one partner so far, EMO. So six on five across for half a minute. And a good opportunity for Eccles and company to cut into the lead. A bounce shot sent off target. Not by much, though, from the stick of Jack Gibbons. He's two for nine shooting against Lemoyne in the semifinals. Knocking off the five-time D2 champs. Again for Eccles. Six on five, lacrosse continues. Oh. And that pass for Scorsia, overthrown. He does track it down. Final moments of the six on five, almost pushed out of bounds. Stays inbounds, back to six on six, lacrosse here. Great teamwork. It was. Even strength. Sharp angle shot, stopped. TJ Heider shut down doorstep. Here it's got it, dodging up top. Passing Eccles, cranks lefty shot, that was blocked. And deflected, and out of bounds, far side near the Tampa bench, who's closest to it. It's the Spartans with great hustle. The fans, the bench pumped up. They'll get the ball back on a clear try. Yeah, great hustle by Tampa, and some handy, nice handiwork by Omer. A couple of tight shots in there that he was able to fight off. KC Platenic helps get it across the midfield line from a shorty spot. And Tampa sets up here in the half field, about four minutes in to the third quarter. Looking for our first goal of the second half in an 8-4 game. Christian Ciesla. A little field time, couple of shifts in the first half for Tampa. Third midfield line. We'll see some action occasionally. Charlie Bullish. Trying to create here at X. Kilkowski. He's the playmaker, the quarterback of this offense. And Coach J.B. Clark telling us today he is the initiator. Creates so much offensively for his team. He's been a big factor yet in the championship game. Bowers lost the handle. 20 to shoot on the 82nd shot clock cycle here for Tampa. Good defense by Mercy, keeping them spread out. Kokowski yeah. here, partner near the end line, the back 15. Eight to shoot here for Tampa. You're right, great defense in the half field so far. Spin move in front, stop. Yamano made a great save, flag flies. Luke McEnany trying to create on a 360 spin move to the right of the cage. Shut down, flag down. Got to see what we have here against Mercy. Is it going to be a push? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a, a push. As McEnany ended up in the goal mouth. I'm not sure if he made contact with Umano. Spin. Yeah, there's that little shove in the back by number 31. That is Christian Castles. Good call by the officials. It looked like McEnany was probably going to land outside of the crease if he didn't get that little tap in the back. So a 30-second man-up opportunity for the Spartans. Tampa partner one for two so far. EMO, that was Cole Willard, one of his three goals first half to make it 3-1. Try to cash in again here at 30 seconds. Six on five across. Willard initiates play for Miller up top. Here's Willard with a handle. Former star at Penn State in the Big Ten. Miller. Ball movement. Crisp. Miller up top. Willard thought about the shot. Final moment. Six on five. Pass in tight quarters. Fake shot. Score. Extra man McEnany cashes in for Tampa. And we've got our first goal of the second half. 
What a great handle by McEnany inside. That was excellent ball movement by the Tampa extra man offense. And then the pass inside to McEnany had some pepper on it. He was able to corral it over top of his left shoulder. And not only that, he catches it, but has the presence to Ahsoka check, avoid contact, get underneath, and then slip it past Umano. That's excellent stick work by McEnany. Senior from West Hill High School, another Syracusean. And 62 points on the year, had a goal against Limestone, semifinals. Possession for Mercy. Yeah, big goal, obviously, for Tampa right there, continuing their momentum that they got that late goal at the end of the second quarter. And if you're Mercy, you're still trying to chip away, but you got to feel good. You had an EMO, you got a couple good shots. Omer made a couple of nice saves. But time is starting to become an issue a little bit. Down by five. Approaching nine minutes left to go here in the third quarter. Got to get something cooking. And this is where you think, you know, Kiernan Gibbons, your, your, your big playmakers, have to start making some things happen. Here's Kiernan to the left of the cage, now to near side GLE. Watched closely by Badeau, the National Player of the Year. And off for TJ Heider. Heider's got 27 goals entering play. He's been quiet today. Trying to make some noise here, charging with a speed dodge. The lefty shot is off target. Who's closest? Great hustle. It's Tampa. Brady stole. Junior long stick defensive midfielder with a sprint and the finish. Almost a carbon copy of the last Mercy possession run out by a long pole for the Tampa Spartans. So excellent hustle. These guys really want that gold. Badol for the goal of the year in Omer. And across the midfield line to Owen Matukas. Another outstanding clear. Passing has been crisp for Tampa. They played a really clean game today. Miller on the move shot. And a stop, Yamano. Tracked that beautifully, moving to his left into the goal stick. Big save for Mercy to keep it a five-goal game. And with it being an early shot, you had some blue jerseys available for transition in the Attackman for Tampa stuck their sticks in the faces of Umano. Something that often you don't teach your attackman to do. You teach them to drop back and ride. But I think in that case, it was good lacrosse because you cut off his vision and he couldn't get that quick outlet pass for a transition opportunity to his poles. The slide comes on Eccles. Scorcia has been pretty quiet outside of the highlight reel goal in the first half. Kiernan got the size, scores! Much needed for Mercy with 7.27 to go in the third quarter. And the Mavericks back on the board, making 9-5. Great individual effort by Brady Kiernan, senior out of Ontario. It looks like the matchup got switched, but he switched from one All-American to another. So it wasn't Badeau that had the matchup, it was Nizalek. And just a great individual move. Good shot. It's actually Matukas. So, man, take your pick. I mean, you got a first team All American in Matukas, but he's a shorty. Nizalik and Badeau. And the, high, and the slide wasn't there until late. Nice job by Kiernan. Tampa having won nine of the first 16 faceoffs, looking for possession. They'll try to get it with Sam Collingwood off the wing, but then it's empty. And Hyder and company take advantage. Turned over. TJ Hyder finds it and then spins and finds the empty goal. And back-to-back -back tallies for Mercy to make it 9-6. What a play and what a turn of events here at Rentschler Field. Terrific opportunistic play by Hyder. We saw a couple of these yesterday in the Cornell Rutgers game. The Rutgers had trouble clearing in their defensive zone. The ball comes out, Hyder picks it up and takes full advantage and throws that into the cage. Tampa bench, they're upset about something else now. I didn't really see anything funky happen on that play other than a bad pass into the middle of the field. Hunter Turner head to head with the All-American P.J. Argaros. And comes back to Tampa here on possession. And Luke McEnany who's got a pair of goals today on five shots. Plays the Fitzpatrick, so the back-to-back -back goals from Kiernan and T.J. Heider on the strip and score. 
It's like a scoop and score, you know, a pick six in football. Yeah. It, it changes the game immediately. It really does. That's why riding is so important in the clearing game, especially in the era of the shot clock. You just do not want your team to have to play long stretches, repeated stretches of defense. Bull dodge, shoulder down, Fitzpatrick, flag flies. A penalty coming here on Mercy. Boy, the bench and the fans across the field to our left, <laughs> not happy <laughs> on the Mavericks side of things as Willard has the handle delay. Flag is down, coming against the Mavericks. Well, it's interesting. It looked like a similar call was made against Tampa at the other end of the field. And the referees, one of the reasons they're here, they're, they're consistent. And they're going to make the same call, it looks like, against Mercy. There's Patrick for Willard. Here's Miller looking for a righty shot. Flag on the field. Here's Kilkowski, spins at X. Kilkowski trying to get free. The hands free, couldn't though. And off the ground ball, picked up by Shane Gibbons. Transfer from LIU. And here comes our call against Mercy. It's actually going to go with a slash. Hmm, minute penalty. And that's going to make the Mustang faithful even more restless. Tampa two for two partner on the extra man. They are. Precise six yeah, on are. five. I thought we were going to get a hold down there. Against Mercy, but instead it's a slash. So the Spartans will be up one man for as much as 60 seconds. And you see Jordan Levine, the head coach of the Mercy Mustangs, out on the field conversing with the official. Well, Tampa was 0 for 6 against Limestone in the semifinals, extra man. Limestone was one for seven, so combined one for 13. That was not a factor in the semis. A convincing win for Tampa, part of the 20-0 season. But here they flick twice on two opportunities, and they've got another shot here to widen the gap. 60 seconds. Colin White to pass to Fitzpatrick. Willard, been outstanding today. Closer and closer to the cage. Ball movement for Miller. Willard cranks, shoots, scores! Got another! Four goals, four shots for the Penn State transfer, Cole Willard. The grad student from Casanova in upstate is lighting up Mercy today. He is lethal with the extra man, and he's got that snappy release, and they put him in different spots on the field. So it makes it difficult to keep up with and account for number 24 in white and red. And that's just a simple cycle to the top of the EMO offense. And we've seen different release points. That time, Willard uses the earth. The bounce shot nestles behind Umano. Cole Willard with four goals in this game. Face-off win one more time for Tampa. And just like that, they're back on the attack. Balls to cross to McEnany. He's got a couple goals. Hunter Turner's been really good. 58.2% entering play today. Faceoff dot for Tampa. He's been outstanding. Just about everything going the way of the Spartans now. They've won 11 of 19 faceoffs. And just under five to go in the third quarter, have a four goal lead. And they've done what they needed to do. They stamped out whatever rally Mercy was going to try to put together. When you talk about that goal scored by Hyder, I thought that could really turn the complexion of this game, but Tampa's not having it. They've done it twice today, Dixie, right? I mean, chances for Tampa to kind of fold and really give up momentum, and twice they've gotten right back. Papa shot, ripped off target. Wide to the left of the cage, and Yumano. You gotta, you gotta, when the chips are down, you have to come back when the, you know, the bullets are flying. You have to have an answer, and Tampa has done just that a couple times today. And, this contest. Kukowski for White on the re-trigger. And Tampa again in control offensively. Very few turnovers today for this team. They've controlled the ball well. Papa has got it here to the right of the cage. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Eight on the shot clock this time. He's got a lot of time. Passing in front, quick stick try, got the pipe. White trying for another for Tampa, got some iron. A few times we've seen it ring off the pipe in this game today for Tampa. Nice look inside. White with the shot, it just kisses off of the crossbar. Excuse me, off of the pipe, the left pipe of the right-handed goaltender, Umano. So Mercy catches a break. They could be down by five at this juncture. 
if that ball was just an inch or two to the right. And instead, Mercy has an opportunity to chip away at this four goal advantage for the Spartans. I'll tell you who's got to get going is Dom Scorcio. He's a leading goal scorer for Mercy Controls here at X. Defenseman hung up inside the crease. With just over three minutes to go, third quarter. Mercy needs something now from their top point producer. Here he goes again, diving toward the crease. He is in the crease. Oh. And the shovel shot was wide anyway. Yeah, Scorchers, he's a heck of a player. Scored on that goal coming around in a similar fashion, but no dice on this one. Better defended by Tampa. They knew it was coming. And the Spartans cruising to the offensive end again. Owen Miller, 32 goals on the year entering play, along with 47 points. Senior from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yet another All-American on the field for Coach Clark in this Tampa program. First year success, amazing, closing in on a championship in year one. That's something. Stop you, this time. Shuts down Willard's bid for a fifth goal on five shots. So Willard, for the first time today, is denied by the goaltender, Yamato. And that was a little bit more in tight where he couldn't get his hands back and set his feet. So the velocity was taken off of it a little bit. But Willard still, man, he's had a huge impact on this game. Scorshut gets off to Jack Gibbons. He'll jog near the top of the box. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. And a four goal lead for Tampa. Trying to become the southernmost ever lacrosse national champion. Right, Limestone had held that record from South Carolina. Yeah, sure. Before. We saw Lenore Pretty Ryan cool. last year. St. Leo's has been in this Division II championship from All the right. South as well. Gibbon spins on the six-foot pole and a shot is stopped again. Big save, Blake Ulmer, the All-American. He's got another save and a good one in this game today. Shows some great flexibility as well. Clamping it outside the crease and stretching to pull it back in and keep Mercy at bay. Seven saves in the game for him. Badeau, the All-American, handles the teammate McEnany. With a minute 15 and counting to go third quarter. Tampa by four. They led by four at halftime after the game was tied 1-1 after the first quarter. Minute five left to go in the game. 48 seconds on the shot clock. So Tampa will have to go to the goal. Now when Miller's been outstanding, one and three for four. Willard, the big offensive star, four or five shooting. Two for McEnany. Fitzpatrick, two and one for three. So the stars for Coach Clark's Spartans are shining brightly today as they bid for the school's first ever national championship in lacrosse. Pretty cool. Miller creates again. Ball movement, Fitzpatrick. 13 on the timer. 27 to go in the quarter. Fitzpatrick gets a step in the defense. He shoots, scores, but he's in the crease. Wipe it off, no goal. Wow, another uh, bullet dodged by this Mercy Maverick team. You had the pipe on the last possession. Now they rule Fitzpatrick was in the crease before that ball went into the cage. Shane Gibbons and company clear it in the offensive end. We need something from Scorsia here. Controls with a low righty bouncers off target wide by a pretty good margin. The goaltender Blake Almer, junior from Naples, Florida. A couple Floridians on the Tampa roster. The game's growing, Dixie, all the time, time, right? Absolutely. Final shot, final moments of the quarter. Kiernan is not close, and that is it for three quarters from here in East Hartford. Things looking good for the top seed of the southern region, Tampa, to run. Welcome back to East Hartford, ready for the fourth quarter Division II National Championship game. Tampa trying for its first ever title against Mercy in the same category, but they lead by four. Face-off win, Tampa's gonna get it again and have a chance to head up field. So I thought Dixie in talking with Coach Clark today, interesting, he said, 
I want to score goals today in unusual ways and not maybe play like a Lemoyne might in terms of two distinctive halves of the field. Try to be creative. Try to get goals in transition and be a bit unusual. Have they done that today? Uh, Maybe I mean, not, they, but they've been effective, right? Yeah, I mean, this, they, they got the transition goal from Badeau from a pole. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that, that's, that comment kind of confuses me a little bit. Uh, just score goals any way you can. Right. You know, win What's a national championship. I, I mean, this is, you know, they're, they're a pretty, they're, they're a dynamic team. They're athletic. I think they have slick sticks. And there's going to be another crease violation on, on Tampa. You know, so you always want to get goals in unconventional ways. You know, pole goals or goals right off of the face-off or goals off of turnovers. But, you know, really, I don't know if, at least from what I've seen in this game, I'm not sure, so sure that they're essential for the success of Tampa because I just feel like they're superior in the 6-on-6 six -six when they have the ball on offense. Yes, yeah. he was saying we, we want to dominate 6-on-6 six -six with long possessions. But yeah. we have to score in other ways, too, to be successful. They haven't needed it. I mean, it's, they've been so solid in this game today, I think, in really all three phases. Yeah, and I, I think credit Mercy. You know, Tommy Umano has made some really nice saves. The, you know, some pipes have happened as well. I think both teams are hustling, cutting off transition, getting back into the hole. Kieran in the All-American trying to create. Slide comes, double team on him. Looking to go across crease, keeps it instead. Good stick work, Kieran. Little rocker step try, blocked, rebound in front. And Scorcia scores. Easy slam dunk goal for Dob Scorcia. And that's how you get things going when you need some goals in a hurry for a comeback if you're Mercy. That was insane. You want to talk about scoring goals in unconventional ways. I'm pretty sure Kiernan threw about six stick fakes. You want to talk about the sky whammy. So I think he faked that last shot. And the Tampa guys all look like it had been shot, and then he slots it over to Scorcia. I mean, Kiernan had attracted about four white jerseys. That's why Scorcia was naked on the back post. Wow. Sick handling. Oh, boy. Curtis, Ontario. Flag flies. Things get physical. Face off, and here comes the call. Yeah, you just you can't have that. You just can't have that. Hunter Turner just got dipped. I and mean, you got a face off, man. It's in a vulnerable, posi vulnerable position coming up and then he just gets crushed. This could possibly be a three-minute non-releasable penalty against Mercy. We saw one last night. Yep. That's why I'm saying it's on the table. You want to be physical, you want to be aggressive, but you got to be smart. It's a three-goal game. It's the national championship. If it's non-releasable in three minutes, Tampa can score and keep on scoring if they win the Six on five, man up face off. So what a job today in the face off top for Hunter Turner, the junior from Tampa. Three and two for five and 58% plus on face offs entering play here today in the national championship game. He's won 13 of 21. He had to head with the All American PJ Argaros of Mercy, helped off by trainers. Now it is to the head. And I did see the signal for non-releasable. I just didn't get to see the duration of the foul. That is a very big determination in this game. It is. We'll see if they put it up anywhere on the scoreboard here in the stadium. Or we, we could hear the PA announcer potentially. Two minutes are up on the board right now. That's what's listed. Jason Girdville, junior pole out of Northport and Long Island was called. And at six on five across here for Tampa. Big opportunity to cash in and keep on going. Two man up goals already. Non-releasable call here. Okay. So it is a two minute foul. Two minute foul. That's fair. I mean, I thought it could have gone to three, but a two minute is, is totally Fair in this situation. Sharp angle. Spin, hit. McEnany got decked. Now here comes Mercy the other way. Down five on six. Opportunity for a clear in the non releasable penalty category. Jack Kipnis, six foot pole, swimming through traffic on the ride across the midfield line. 
So it's big play for Mercy. This could be a momentum shifter. If Mercy could, could convert on this man down, it looks like Tampa's not doubling the ball. A lot of teams don't double the ball in these situations, especially if they have leads. They kind of have a guy playing free safety on the back end of the defense. And right now that looks like it's number nine, Sean Nizalik for the Spartans. Just kind of roaming back there. Kiernan for Tyler Paytack, sophomore from Shelton, Connecticut. Competes for a D2 title in his home state here today. About three plus minutes into the fourth quarter, three goal game. So Hyder and company happy to kill some more of this penalty off, which is down to 30 seconds. Yeah, the only thing is the shot clock continues to run. At 15, though. That's a tough call. What do you do, right? I mean, you don't want to give the ball away and go down yeah. five on six in your own defensive end. Sure. But you want to go to the goal late in the shot clock late. They're Calabria doing right now. with a big drive toward wow. the goal. Gets the pipe. It's a crease call anyway. Woo. Off the iron with an unbelievable effort. There for Mercy. That was spectacular to watch. Holy smokes. That would have been a terrific goal. Had pipes that gone. And, pipes and crease calls. Yes. Yeah. Got a lot of them today. I think that one would have counted had it had it gone because mm -hmm. he was airborne when it hit the crossbar. Didn't look like he landed in the goal mouth. Nolan Miller and company back in control here. The penalty is killed off, though, nicely by Mercy, so we're Back to six aside, sub box. Wow. And a big play for Mercy right uh, off the bench. The strip there from Castles. You just, but it's out of bounds and right back to Tampa. You got to have more discipline there. He just ran right up the back of Cole Willard. Yep. Tough. Too bad. It was a huge play. It was. Out of the sub box there for Castles. Willard spinning. Been spectacular today. It's Patrick. Here's Owen Miller. Shorty matchup. He'll charge in. Pass deflected. Looking there for Colin White. Wow, trying to find a clean ball. handle. Instead, it's Mercy the other way. What an opportunity in transition. What a ground ball by Zach, Zach Higgins. Higgins. Ooh, that that was terrific. Great handle, under pressure, against the sideline. That's a big boy, man. That was 6'3", 210. Running down the sideline, chugging it into the offensive end. That was a terrific ground ball by Higgins. So five minutes into the fourth and a three-goal game. Well, Mercy Tallis here. Things get really interesting. Handle from Jack Gibbons, senior midfielder. Two and one for three against Le Moyne in the semifinals. Here's Maycar. And a factor today, right-hand cradle. Yeah, Mercy just refuses to go away. They continue to play tough lacrosse. Kiernan, the Canadian. Far side GLE had to poke loose. Guess who? Player of the year, Badeau again with a six-foot pole. Spectacular play. It's been a good matchup between Kieran and Badeau all day. And Kieran's got the better of him twice. Badeau's got the better of him a couple of times. What you would expect from two first-team All-Americans. Cormac McCarthy for Jackson Day across the midfield line. A little sprint toward the box here for Tampa right in front of his bench, but then lost wow. the ball, and it's out of bounds. What Things look just fine there for a moment. What a takeaway. Impressed with the stick checks of, of Mercy here in this quarter. Body checks, you know, got to clean it up a little bit. And it'll be interesting to see next goal that's scored. Will Turner be available to come out and take the next face off? Well, he just got drilled. He got his bell rung. The two-minute non-releasable call went against J Jason Girdville. Off the wing there for Mercy on that play. However, unable to cash in Tampa, trying to close out this championship with 8.45 and counting to go in the fourth quarter. Eccles has it, left of the cage. Scorcia, the quarterback. Passing up top, Mercy needs one here. Ball movement for Guglielmo, trying to get free. Swim through traffic, two bodies all over him. Scorcia again, defender hung up. 25 to shoot, 8.20 and counting in the fourth quarter. Kiernan, stick work, again, spectacular. Gibbons, who got it again? Mm. Lido, one more time with a steal. And then, although there is a violation play on here, right back to Eccles and company. Just unbelievable with that six-foot pole, Matthew Bedeau, fun to watch. Yeah, he knocked that down, and then Eccles got shoved to the ground after he missed the first-time grounder. 
but with that shove, much like on the other end, fresh 60 reset on the shot clock for the Mavericks. Scorcia trying to create right of the cage. Kiernan set up, firing that pass through traffic. Comes to Gibbons on a bounce, nearly intercepted. On the play there by Hayden Toth with a six foot pole. Big possession here for Mercy. Through traffic, looking there for Heider, and it's off his cross out of bounds and turned over. That's tough. Way for, way to, for the Tampa defense really to buckle down. Toth, senior, long stick defensive midfielder. Gets the ball across the midfield line, and here's Tamp again setting it up in the half field. Rolling down towards seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. That was a big possession for Mercy. If they could have come, come away with one there. And then who knows what the situation will be at the faceoff for the Spartans. But you've got to give a ton of credit to Tampa. Didn't even really allow a shot to get off during that sequence. So terrific defense by Tampa keeping Mercy at bay. It's really big. Could have cut it to two. Yeah. Charlie Bullish. Handles here. White's got it. Top of the box. Shot clock at 30. Game clock at 640 and counting. Fourth quarter. Can Tampa put it away and make some history for their program? About to find out. Here's White. Quick stick. Try stop. Umano got a piece of that. Moving well to his right. Got the goal stick on it. Another quick stick attempt from Colin White of Tampa. Umano comes up big again. Huge. He keeps his team in the game. It's 11th save of the contest. Now we're going to have a timeout by Mercy. 6-17 remaining in the ball game. 65 seconds left to shoot. Jordan Levine wants to draw something up to try. Six nineteen, frozen fourth quarter clock here at Rensselaer Field, East Hartford, Connecticut. Dave Mark, our entire crew, watching Tampa, the Spartans, trying to go twenty-one and zero in their first ever title game appearance, head to head with Mercy from Dobbs Ferry, New York. The Mavericks at sixteen and one, also their first ever appearance in the D two title game. Time after time, Dixie Tampa just stands a little too strong for Mercy. There have been opportunities for the Mavericks to get back in the game here. Absolutely, and, and this is a prime opportunity right here. The timeout taken by Mercy to try to draw something up. 6-19 left to go here in the game. The Tampa's, look, I, I think Tampa's probably the better team talent-wise. But for Grit and Moxie, Mercy just will not go away. They continue to fight. It's just a matter of executing and getting better shots on the cage. But I mean, you got the goalie of the year, the long stick of the year, and the national defender of the year, and national player of the year in Matthew Badeau. Three of those guys with four honors, the tops of their game in Division II. Back on her way off the timeout. Down by three. Another huge possession here for Mercy. Calabria the handle. Here's Heider. A chance a moment ago, but a crease call. And Gibbons has it outside the box on the near side. 45 on the timer. This possession for the Mavericks. Gibbons back 15. Tries a split dodge move to his left now. Looking to shovel in front through traffic. Scorcia. Defender lost his six. Scorcia. Mm. Good recovery. Last second. What a play there by Christian Bodiak, who lost his stick, then regained just in time for a trail check on Scorcia to alter the shot. And Badeau was closing out as well, which kind of made Scorcia think twice. And now you have a 
Good ride from Scorcia. Well, it sure was. Fantastic play on the D-stick. Uh, Brady stole. And it's right back to Mercy. Again, Mercy just refused to fold. 5.20 left to go in the game. It's got to be impressive, right? Wow. That's something. Yeah. Great hustle. Here's Eckel. Sharp angle, trying to go to the upper 90, and it's over the crossbar. Scorcia is closest to it as he wins the foot race there with Brady Stoll, the leader from Cincinnati, went to St. X, St. Xavier High School. Great tradition of sports at that school and Cincy. Same high school as Connor Busick. There you go. Head coach of Cornell. That's right. Big Red will be going after the... Going for the title. Going after the Division One crown tomorrow. Amazing. What a story. Give it shot off target. I feel like Mercy's getting a little lazy with the backups of the shot. Scorcia almost got caught flat-footed on that last one when Stoll almost beat him to the end line. Speed dodge move on the restart. T.J. Harder for Scorcia. One goal each for these star attackmen for Mercy. That pass beyond its reach toward the sideline. Lunging keeps it in bounds. Anyone's ball, though, going to be taken by Tampa. Got a flag. And a flag flies. Sean Mizalek with some great speed to grab that. 26 ground balls entering play today. It's going to be a push, I believe, against Tampa. So Mercy once again. They've really controlled possession, I feel, here in the fourth quarter. And this Tampa defense, they've logged a lot of miles down here in the defensive end, but they have not broken. We'll see if... The, Ma the Mavericks can get something going here. Huge opportunity again. 0 for 2, EMO so far for Jordan Levine's Mavericks. Gibbons controls. A 30-second technical call. Kiernan waits for the pass from Scorcia, who operates up top with the extra man, 6 on 5. Kiernan, Gibbons, cranks, shoots, stop. Goal stick stop. But the ball's elevated, loss. Heider finds it, knocks it in. It's a goal. Now waved off. Hang on, crease call. Hang on, no goal. Heider thought he had a tally on a rebound. Instead, it's Tampa on the breakout the other way. Yeah, I think they called interference because Ulmer made the save, and then there was contact with his stick that dislodged it, knocked it right to Scorcia, and he's the one that, or higher, and he's the one that stuck it. Wow. Big call. Can't touch it inside the crease, right? Once the goalie has possession. Coach Clark calls a timeout here with 4.01 to go in the fourth quarter and a three-goal Tampa lead. You know, Dixie, we were talking with Jordan Levine this week, the head coach of this Mercy team. He said, we've come so close. Three straight years making the quarterfinals, <laughs> including last year, COVID outbreak. They couldn't compete in the quarterfinal game. He was so grateful to get there chance to advance through the quarters, beat Lamont in the semis, and get here. It's been a dream season, but they've had their chances to realize that dream several times to catch Tampa. They just can't do it. They, they really have, and they just haven't been able to close the deal. Credit to Tampa and the Spartans, but you got to tip your cap to this Mercy team. They've continued to hang around. They continue to play hard. That ride was, you know, exhibit A of, of getting the ball back and then creating that extra man opportunity. But you know, th that story of COVID, it's its so you know universal, so widespread around the sport, and not just lacrosse, but other collegiate sports of you know what these young men have had taken away from them, and now the opportunity to come back. I mean, you know, when we're talking to coaches this week and prep for our games in the Division One side of things, like what's been the greatest thing about the, the season? And they're like, just being able to be together, just being able to play and have a normal, somewhat normal, existence in college lacrosse. It really is something that they cherish even more after the experience of the, of the pandemic. Timeout, 4-1 to go here in the fourth in a 10-7 Tampa lead. Trying to make history for that program. They've won titles in baseball. They've won titles in volleyball, beach volleyball as well, but never lacrosse. Beach volleyball. Maybe that changes here. Love that. 2-1-2. Two two. Yeah. It. It's amazing. Of course I'll Amazing watch. what they do. Well, we'll see. I don't think Mercy needs to pull the goalie just yet. Four minutes left. But we'll see what strategy Tampa incorporates. Feels like it's been forever since they've had the ball on offense. Will they attack or will they look to milk this clock down a little bit? 
Rolling under 350 and counting now with a three goal lead and the ball. Miller controls for White. And with Miller very effective offensively in the first half for the Spartans. Couple goals today for J.B. Clark. Fitzpatrick looks to his left, gets the call from the coaching staff. On what strategy is here with 22 to shoot at 320 and counting on the game clock. Speed dodge, corner of the box, Fitzpatrick. That's a shorty matchup. Scores! Daniel Fitzpatrick, patient, got loose. Left wing, had the first goal of the game for Tampa, has the latest for the Spartans, the lead back to four. I think it was the best of both worlds for Tampa. They were able to milk 51 seconds off of the clock. And once Fitzpatrick went to the cage, just did a great job of getting underneath of this matchup, fake down, little head nod, got Umano to go low, he went high, tattoos the upper 90. And Charlie Fitzpatrick gives Tampa a four goal bulge and almost killed an entire minute off of that possession. Well, baseball's won eight national titles, volleyball's won three. Beach volleyball, as we talked about this year for Tampa, Never in lacrosse, maybe that changes today. And second for Fitzpatrick, the lead at four with three even to go here in the fourth quarter. Hunter Turner was back out to take the face off for Tampa. That's great to see. Yeah, it really is, great news. Levine does have a timeout left for Mercy. Kiernan cranks, lefty shot blocked. Never got there looking for the rebound. He gets decked. He's on the grass surface. Ball's loose and taken away by Tampa. Long pole, Hayden Toth. 25 ground balls entering play here today. Finds the GB. Another possession with a four goal lead. And time is running out here on Mercy. Yeah, it's ticking down and this will be interesting. Here comes Umano out of the cage. So it's gonna be an empty net as Mercy looks to double the ball, extend their pressure, create a turnover and try to get it going the other way. JB Clark and the Tampa Spartans still have one timeout left. Bullish, speed dodge, trying to stay away and play keep away here in the final moments. The net is empty. Yamato pressing out, trying to cause a turnover. Trail check, Bullish trying to regain. Lost his stick briefly. That's yeah, gonna be a legal procedure. Bullish lost his stick and it was still in the vicinity of play, so that's an automatic turnover to Tampa. Um, excuse me, to Mercy. Great hustle there by Girdville to help create the turnover. Mercy back in the offensive end. They need ah. something quickly. Trail check the other way. Beautiful effort. And again by Tampa and Sean Nizalek, yet another star player defensively. With long stick defensive midfielder of the year. First team All-American. Terrific player. Wow. He has made some huge plays today. I'm with you. Casey Platenic, senior out of Syracuse, went to JD High School upstate. Got the speed. The keep away game continues. And Tampa inches closer to history for men's lacrosse, looking for their first ever national title. Still have the timeout in their back pocket, should they need it. Bullish again, trying to beat two blue jerseys. Bumped hard. Yeah. Somehow stays in bounds for Miller on a bounce. This is so much better than having to keep it in. I mean, you know, you have the shot clock for a reason. 33 seconds left to shoot. 47 seconds left, game clock. And Mercy's still pressuring the ball, but I think the Mavericks are starting to realize that this championship will not be theirs this year, but what a season for this ball club. Quarterfinal had a forfeit last year because of COVID. This year, they make the run of the championship game as Colin White handles with seven to shoot and only 20 seconds in the game clock. He'll fire that. Into the deep corner, shot clock expires. Only 15 seconds to go in this one. Coach Clark told us today when he won his titles at Limestone, he goes to look back to the bench and see all the players celebrating. He's gonna look back again in the final moments and turn to his team and make some history in men's lacrosse for the first time in school history. The Tampa Spartans have won the Division II Men's Lacrosse National Championship. 
the southernmost champion in men's lacrosse history. It's Tampa. Terrific today. They take home the 2022 title. Nothing like it for Tampa. The dog pile, and I don't know, I, I hope Blake Homer gets up okay. He was throwing his helmet, he was on his back, but you know, it looked like he was ready to get pinned in a professional wrestling match, almost. But there you see the exultation, the pure joy of winning a national championship. It wasn't easy, it was a tight game throughout. I think Tampa was in control after the first quarter for the most part, but this Mercy team refused to quit, refused to give an inch, but in the end, it's the Tampa Spartans that are gonna wear the crown of Division II Men's Lacrosse National Champions.